Welcome back to Carpentry College. Today we are going to make a T halving and a corner halving joint. This is a T halving joint. And then we are, we are going to do a corner halving, which is here. For example, this can be used for a timber grounds and a wall plate for a cut roof. So the tools you will need uh, required for this job will be a pencil, single pin marking gauge, a tenon saw, ruler, tri square, bevel edge chisel, 25 mil, 32 bevel edge chisel, and a mallet. You'll also need a cutting aid like this, which is ABU, which is known as a bench hook. Timber required for this exercise is a piece of plain or round timber, 460 by 45 by 28. Firstly, check the timber is 460 millimeters long, 45 millimeters wide by 28 millimeters thick. We measure 240 millimeters long and mark it. Mark a face side mark, followed by a face edge mark, like so. Okay, so now we need to mark the 240 mil line using the tri-square all the way round. Okay, so this is the tri-square, the stock is this. Okay. So this is touching here, like so. Okay, so when squaring a line around, make sure the tri-square stock is touching the face side or the face edge when you're squaring that line around. Using the tenon saw, Cut your mark line. When handling the tenon saw, keep your index finger as shown. Right. When starting the cut, position your thumb on the saw for guidance. Pull the saw back three times to get a good start. slow as you get to the end. Right. Using the remainder, measure 150 millimeters long and repeat. Right, mark the position of the corner halving. Square. That's all you need to do. Okay, mark the position of the T halving. Thank you. 
Using the single pin marking gauge, establish a center position. There. And I'll come either side. So I've got two initial marks, right? That. And then what I'm going to do is. In the middle of those two. I wasn't happy. I am. I've been tightening that. Right, right, okay, so I'm gonna put put this in the vice now, um, Julian, just so it's easier. It's this thought in that's to touch that face edge. Okay. So Now I mark the male end. Right. The, uh, so now you're going to cut away, or this will be cut away, cut away from the top on the corner and the T, and this member will be cut on the underside, and then both will be put, brought together, and one will be known as a T halving, hence the name T, and then this end will be a corner halving, hence the name corner. Okay, okay. let's start with cutting the, the, the corner ones first. Okay, so the first procedure will be that you place the saw on the what we call the waist side, which is the side that I was shading. I'm gonna point to the waist side with my thumb. And then again, you are gonna, the idea is to try and cut the gauge line. This is a gauge line. And what you're trying to do is use the tenon saw and Split the gauge line. So, what I'm doing is holding my thumb as a guide. One, two, three. And slowly and easily, the score along the top of it. Okay. 
Yeah. Right, start on the corner edge with the tenon saw. And what you want to do is that the guide that I'll score, the scoring that I've done earlier is a guide for the saw to follow through. And then at the same time, I am watching my gauge line, but making sure it's still pointing on the waist side of the line. Nice and easy does it. Same again, repeat at that corner. Oh, yeah, that's like that. Now we've cut the diagonal lee on uh, with the tenon saw. We're going to now cut um, uh, the, a line now straight. Just keeping the saw nice and straight. It shouldn't be varying off, it should just follow through. Just making sure you don't go beyond the line. Right. So, so it's over again, waist side of the line. I'll keep my thumb as the guide. One, two, three. So, using the chisel, use the, uh, just score the fibers in the very corner, just cut them away, using the chisel like so, and then just take that away. Like that. That's it. That's right. Uh, repeat the same process on this piece of timber.
Now, we've cut away the, the corners of those two pieces, or the third, three pieces. One's going to be a corner, and the other is going to go into there to form a T halving, like so. Okay, so now, I'm going to show another technique that Nick now, uh, uh, Julian, where we, we call it trenching. So I'm going to score it along there with a chisel, with this chisel. Yeah, using this as a knife, right? And then I'm going to then tilt that into there like this. And what that does, that just gives a sort of guide. Still using my thumb in this one, just to show you another way of taking this out. I'm gonna do the same thing. So now I've chiseled out this, uh, or, or I've scored along there, took the chisel inward, and then as you saw me just score this out, and then take this surplus away, ready for my, this saw is gonna sit in there like that. Okay? So now, then I'm gonna turn it around and do this side. Now before I do that, I always offer it up to it. Just to, yeah, right. Okay, so. So now, I'm just gonna, Lightly chiseling away in that corner there. Okay, so that's one. So now sit your saw on the uh, uh, trench cut that I've already made. That gives it a good start. You don't have to worry about putting your thumb there. Nice and slowly. Use all the saw. Let's be watchful on the lines. I'll do this one before I do that cut. One. And this one in the middle is called a relief cut. One, two, three. Okay. You want so I have now selected another chisel that's slightly wider. Uh, then this chisel because I need to get inside of there as flat as possible. So the wider the chisel, the flatter you can get the bottom of that halving joint. So that's why I've selected a wider chisel. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to chop out this section of the T halving. So first of all, try and take out the corner. The when I say the corner, corner edge, this edge here. So I'll just tilt the chisel up a little bit at a time, I'm chopping away. And what I'm aiming for is trying to create a little mountain, if you like. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, down to my gauge line. 
quite like this, it's gone, it's nice and sharp, nice and sharp. I'm sorting it up like this. All right, down to my. Creating a little mountain, I will do. So this is this is how it ends up. So you, you're creating a kind of ramp. So I'm going to turn it around now and do and do it like the same again here, like so. Okay. So now you're left with that, a little bump inside, a little round, a little hill. So now I'll take most of the stock away. So now I'm going to level off the bottom of this how, uh, halving joint. So now I'm just going to just take the top off of that hill and easy does it. Nice sharp chisel, hands behind the chisel also. Okay. notice I don't go right away through because you're gonna I don't want any break up beyond there so I only stop more than halfway of the material and then I'm gonna turn it around Thank you. 
using a tricer, what I'm doing is just seeing if it's flat inside in here. So I'm moving it along. Oh, sorry, I'm moving that along there like that. There's a bit of a, as the way you're seeing, is it flat enough or flat right angle to the tricer? I can see like a little gap there. Yeah, come down along. I just need to, I don't know what I'm going to do is I'm up, up, point and point right there. So I just need to take a little bit more for there. Yeah, I'll do that again. Look. There's just that there, look. See that there, there. Let's see. Let's see it out. Just to, just to see like in relation to the flatness or hot, if it's higher than the other, sometimes that does happen. So I'll check that in both areas prior to fitting it. Okay, right. It's a little a little bit, but what we're gonna do is gonna, I'm gonna put it together and then see, because it might have to tweak one or the other. I'm not sure, it should be yeah, one on the other. It might. It looks like it might have to tweak this bit. So now, uh, offer the, the the completed uh, cuts into one another. So the T halving. So I place the T halving into here. Now there's a little issue. Just run my finger there and like that. Look, it's slightly higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. That good. little bump there. So now I need need to make some just some very fine adjustments. So, the final adjustment looks like it looks like on this one. If you look, it looks like I need to either take a little bit there, but to make that go down, a little bit of a lip in this corner here. So if I do that, in this corner, just slightly. Let's have another check in there. Okay, I think I can do that right side, let me see. And that goes in there. So that's that little bit there. Right, okay. So I'm just gonna go. So now this is kind of, I've got this, it's very fine. So I'm kind of slicing this like this. Look.
Yeah. Just put gas. We are perfect. And put the square one just. Mm-hmm. Here we are. And this highlighting. No gaps. No gaps there. And then this one goes on here like that. Now this one, again, repeat the same process you've done here. Just tweaking it down a little bit. It looks like it could be either or. Now, how do I check that? So again, if I lay that down to here, it's this one that needs to have a little bit of tweaking. This one's pretty good, actually. But I still feel with the two, that this one's that little bit higher. You can feel it there, look. You can see it, actually, even here. Oh, no, you can't, but I can. Just a little bump. This is slightly higher than that one. Hence why it's that little bit here. Yeah. Okay, so all, of it, all I'm gonna do is just that, that little fine adjustment here. Because it needs it, isn't it? Perfect. Yeah, nice and tight corner halving, followed by my lovely T halving. There you go. So now you know how to do some halving joints. You have a go.